What's going on guys, Stefan here. Today I'm going to take you through what a typical day of training is like for me in the off season. I just signed with an agent a few days ago that has some interest from some teams that he's working on now, but also has some opportunities that could come up in another month or two. So my goal for this off season is to stay fit and stay sharp because something could come up tomorrow or two months from now. So I just need to be prepared for anything. So I'll take you through a day of training and I recorded these sessions a few days ago, but I wanted to show you this day in particular because it was a bit unique. As you'll soon see, I do a ball training session like this every once in a while, but especially over my last few years of training, I found doing a session like this extremely important important and necessary in order to improve and stay sharp. But this is a very typical day for me. I do a gym session and then a training session later on. And just remember, I only record once every week, week and a half, but this is essentially what I do almost every single day. But let's get into these training sessions and I will take you through what I did in the gym. All right, so I started off this workout doing some band work. Using a resistance band is awesome for the hips and the glutes, so I'll take you through some of the exercises that I did. I started off doing standing hip abduction, working the outer hip, and I did 10 reps on each side. Straight after that, I worked the hip flexor, so the front of the hip bring my legs straight out in front of me. And then lastly, I worked the glute, bring my legs straight out behind me. Right after that, I got into some band walks. This first walk I did, as you can see, I'm keeping my feet about shoulder width. So the band is gonna wanna pull your ankles together. The whole point of this is to keep the hips strong and keep the feet wide, resisting that pull from the band. And I did that going forwards and backwards. The second walk I did is similar, except now I'm controlling my feet together and driving it out 45 degrees. Same idea, control the band, keep the hips strong, drive that band apart. The third walk I did, we're just going straight out to the side and back. So the first superset I did is mostly plyometric based. I did three exercises all back to back to back. The first exercise I did was a single leg box jump. Doing anything single leg like this is awesome for soccer players because we're constantly jumping and landing on one leg. So after I did 8 reps on each side, I went into pull-ups. The third exercise I did in the superset is a deficit box jump. Start on top of the box, take a step off, absorb that impact, absorb that force, and then quickly explode up. And as you can see, I'm really sticking the landing. Again, absorb that force as you come down. This next superset I alternated between two exercises. The first one was on the glute ham machine. And I did three glute ham raises, which are extremely difficult, really focuses on that entire posterior chain, so the hamstrings, the glutes, and the lower back, which is where all your power comes from as an athlete. And then I did five lower back extensions. But as you can tell with these glute ham raises, your hamstrings are extremely engaged trying to pull yourself all the way up. And then I went straight into a single arm kettlebell shoulder press. Doing it with the kettlebell upside down, so having all that weight on the top, really focuses on that stabilization in the shoulder, because it's a lot more difficult to control. From there, I went into a single leg stiff leg deadlift, keeping a slight bend in my knee, but focusing on that stretch in the hamstring at the bottom. Another awesome hamstring exercise.
And then right after that, I went into dips on the rings. And this is the first gym I've ever been to that had rings like this. And they are so much more difficult than just doing dips on a bar. As you can see, this is my first time doing it. Very shaky, requires a lot more stabilization. And to finish it off, a bit of abs, I did mountain climbers with a little bit of a rotation to engage the obliques, and then I finished on the rowing machine. I did 250 meters as fast as I can, which is about 45-50 seconds of work. And then to finish it off, a little bit of recovery, just 15 minutes of foam rolling and stretching. So all in all, including the foam rolling and stretching at the end, I was in the gym for about an hour. From there, I was planning on doing a session with the ball on the turf field. That field was taken, so I ended up just going to the tennis court. This ended up being good for me because I did a fitness session the day before, so my legs were feeling pretty heavy. So this was awesome just to focus on more technical work. So after I warmed up, did a bit of juggling, I did 100 juggles below the knee, 100 knee height, 100 waist height, 100 head height, and then 100 every 10th juggle, knocking it above my head and then controlling it um, with either my laces or my instep. Before we get into it, doing a session like this, just knocking a ball against the wall is amazing. I can't recommend it enough, especially for players looking to work on their first touch, passing, anything technical. I don't know exactly how many touches I got during this hour and a half session, but it was thousands. So the first drill I did, only a couple yards away from the wall, just one touch passing, I did 100 with the right foot, straight into 100 with the left foot, and then straight into 100 alternating between both feet. Every single pass, I'm trying to keep the ball on the ground, I'm trying to hit the same spot on the wall every single time. It's just repetition, making sure every pass is perfect. After I did that entire sequence three times through, I focused on two touch passing. I set up three cones, just knocking the ball against the wall, taking a touch with the inside of my foot across my body to the other side. Same thing, pass, touch, pass, touch. Making sure every touch is good, making sure I'm hitting the same spot on the wall every single time. So after we went three times through with the inside of the foot, working on the outside of the foot now. Same idea, pass, take a touch with the outside of the foot to the opposite side, same thing on the other side. So we did inside, outside, now we're going to use the sole of our foot. So I passed the ball against the wall, took a touch with one foot, brushed it across to the other side of my body, pass, touch, brush, pass, touch, brush. Now we're going to go back to taking a touch with the inside of our foot, except now instead of taking a touch across the body, we're going to open up the hips to bring the ball across. Next drill, I'm going to move a little bit further back, about 10 yards, just focusing on two-touch passing. But all this stuff is super effective. There's nothing fancy with any of these drills. They're all super simple, but they're all super effective. It's just a lot of repetition and trying to make every touch as perfect as possible. Thank you. 
Final drill, just a little bit of wall juggling. Started doing 50 juggles, one touch alternating between each foot. Then I did 50 juggles, taking two touches using the same foot. And lastly, 50 juggles, two touches alternating between feet. So that's a very typical day for me. One gym session, one training session. I'm not in the gym every single day, but I am most days. And of course, like I talked about in previous videos, I do vary the intensity and allow myself time to recover. But give some of these drills, give some of these exercises a shot. I promise they are very beneficial. And if you found this video informative and helpful, be sure to leave it a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Peace.